Hello my few and far between viewers, I'm Mr. Luxarina and welcome to Horncraft, a video journal chronicling my attempts to learn how to make a Gemshorn. Now, if you're not a massive early music geek, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell is a Gemshorn? Well, put simply, a Gemshorn is a Germanic cousin of the ocarina, which I'm sure you're familiar with by now. But, while this Italian-style ocarina is made from glazed clay, a gem's horn would t traditionally be made out of an animal's horn. Originally, these would have been made out of the horn of a chamois goat, called Gemse in German, hence the name. More modern replicas, though, tend to use bison or highland cow horn, like these. Now, I say replicas because, strictly speaking, there are no functional, surviving examples of gem's horns from their original time period. All anyone's had to work with are a few illustrations, a clay gemshorn shaped instrument found underneath the house that was built in 1450, and an organ stop that was named after it. It's not even entirely clear when they started or stopped being used. The general consensus, at least as far as I've been able to research it, is that the gemshorn was a pastoral instrument, usually with about four holes, not particularly sought after or highly thought of. Instead of trying to replicate exactly those early pastoral instruments, I'm going to be taking a note out of Horace Fitzpatrick's book, who, during the early music revival of the 20th century, devised a seven-hole tuning for the Gemp's horn, which is more akin to a recorder's fingering. That being said, I'm also going to try and use a more ocarina-like fingering system with 12 holes, and see how they compare. Now, before we begin, I just want to make it clear this is neither an instructional video nor a tutorial. I've never done this before, and I will almost certainly make mistakes. Instead, I just want to share my experience of actually doing this with you guys, with all the frustration and pitfalls that I will surely encounter along the way. So, now that we've got introductions out of the way, let's take a look at what we're working with. So, our first step is going to be cutting this horn down to size. If I were to take a horn like this and make a gems horn out of it, I'd end up with some sort of contrabass or even sub-contrabass gems horn, and it would be, frankly, too low and too quiet to be of much use. I may do it as an experiment later on, but for now, we're sticking with the tenor. Since horns vary a lot in terms of size, shape, width, circumference, everything, using the length isn't actually all that much use. Instead, we have to measure them by volume. According to the tutorial I'm for the most part following from vaverco.de, a 70ml horn will give us a soprano, a 220ml horn will give us an alto, a 350ml horn will make a tenor, and a 950 would give us a bass. We're going to be making a tenor gems horn for the first attempt, so that will be 350. So, 300ml of water, Let's just mark that point there, and empty it out. So this line is where we're going to be cutting the labium, which is arguably the most important part of the instrument, because that's what makes the air vibrate down through the rest of it to actually make a sound. As such, I'm actually going to be cutting the horn about 3 centimeters higher than that, so we have space for the fipple. Then we're going to sand and polish it so it looks nice and feels nicer to work with. So, just a little midway progress report. I have determined that the saw I was using, while functional, is a bit of a pain in the ass. I'll look into what alternatives I can use for later attempts. But it did the job. One thing I didn't know, but probably should have thought of, apparently when you apply friction to horn, it smells like burning hair. So that was fun. So, let's get started on the sanding. I'm going to be using a few different pieces of sandpaper of varying levels of coarseness, 
and sanding with the grain, because I have heard that sanding against the grain can uh, have some less desirable results, and it, it's already, I'm not sure if you can see, it's not the smoothest as it is, uh, because I bought them rough to save a bit of money, so we'll see how, uh, we'll see how sanding it works. So, if you look closely, I think it should be clear the effect of all this sanding is much, much smoother now. It'll be very nice to work with from now on. And that concludes our first episode. Nice, smooth cow horn. So, come back next time when we'll be making the tip on and cutting out the labium. Then maybe we'll see if we can get a sound out of it. See you then. I had to develop my home, for sure I found my home was a bit of a devil to play. So awfully wound, to give you a sound, a beautiful sound, so rich and round. All oh, the hours I had to spend before I mastered it in the end. But that was yesterday, and just today I looked at the...